Shalom and welcome to Simple Biblical Hebrew. I'm Eric Modal. Today we want to begin a study of Psalm 119 in Biblical Hebrew. And before we do, I want to give a little introduction to myself. Uh, this time I am a, a pastor in California and God has richly blessed my life through, through His Holy Language Hebrew and through the study of His Bible and Tanakh and, and also the New Testament, uh, Berit HaChadasha. I am a believer in Yeshua. I am a Christian. Um, but, I, but I want to have a place here where Jews feel comfortable as well coming to study Tanakh. And so as we study along, I'll give comments from a Messianic perspective, but I always try to be respectful to our Jewish friends who might be here studying as well. So Psalm 119 then, you know, we'll just go little by little and keep the studies as short as we can. And, and we won't do the studies consecutively on the channel, right? We'll probably just do them whenever we can. So who knows how far we'll get today, but but uh, but we'll be going through and I'll be making comment here and there on, on the text. But we will be learning it in, in Hebrew. We'll be learning it um, with the the Masoretic Nikud, right? The vowel markings that we see here in the Leningrad Codex of the Tanakh. But we will also feel free to vary from that from time to time uh, in order to better understand the, the text. And so when we do that, I'll just call it, for the sake of time, paleo. So if I say Masoretic pronunciation, I'm talking about the Ben Asher tradition Nikud here that if you're Jewish, for instance, you want to you wanna use these marks. But... Um, but there are different ways of pronouncing Hebrew, and sometimes exploring some of those ways can be helpful. And so when we do that, I'll just say paleo, meaning an older, you know, an, a guess at what maybe it sounded like, you know, in older times than 1000 AD with the Masoretes. So that's only for the purpose of learning and so on. So we'll be marking up the text to show you where the Shorish is, where the, where the, roots are and I'll underline the roots in red and then I'll underline when I can the prefixes and the suffixes in yellow just to sort of help you and then I'll be bringing up the text over here on the left uh, in, in the New American Standard um, Bible I can bring up the Strong's there's the root what it means happiness to go straight Asher and so on so um, we'll be studying in that way. So I hope the Lord blesses us. I hope that um, wherever we are, whoever we are today, that his word richly blesses us. And our goal here is to pray Psalm 119 in Hebrew. We don't want to just read it. This is meant to be prayed. Hashem wants us to pray this. And so um, that'll be our goal. And... Um, so beginning then in verse 1, notice that this is an acrostic psalm, that every eight verses begin with the consecutive letter of the Hebrew Aleph bet. So the first eight verses begin with Aleph, right? Isn't that cool? And then the next eight verses would, will begin with Bet, and all the way through this longest chapter in the Bible. So we're, we're beginning then with Aleph today in Mizmor, Kuf, Yutet. Mizmor is Psalm, Kuf, Yutet, Psalm 119. Eshre tamime derek ha holachim be tarat Adonai. And we're going to be saying the Lord's name, Adonai, when we come upon yod he vav -He, the his proper name in Hebrew. We as Christians believe that we're free to say his name in proper in uh, in Hebrew, his proper name in uh, in Hebrew out loud. But we also want to respect our Jewish friends who may be studying with us today. And so, um, you know, in, in Judaism, you're not supposed to say his name 
out loud, you, you would just say Hashem or Adonai until Mashiach comes one day, and then our Jewish friends believe that you will be able to say his name out, out loud. Well, we believe Mashiach has come as Christians, so we believe Yeshua is the Messiah, and so we feel free to say his name out loud, but according to Jewish halacha even, but, but for the sake of, you know, just ha having everyone feel comfortable, for this study, we're going to say Adonai. Okay, so Eshre Tami Meidere. This is, this is the Hebrew word for blessed. Blessed, Esher. Blessed is the root, and it means, you know, it means happiness, blessed, says over here. But it comes from, from, a, from another uh, Hebrew root, Ashar, or Asher. And it means to go straight, to, to go on, to, to advance, right, to proceed. So, Eshre, and by the way, the Yud at the end is just a, you know, um, sort of a, a suffix here. And so Esre means blessed, the state of being blessed. To be blessed then in Hebrew is to be going straight, to be advancing on, right? You're not just in one place. You haven't stopped growing. Your, your life is, uh, is you, you understand, is a process and that you're, you're not headed to the right and to the left and zigzagging all over in life, but you're headed straight, straight towards what we'll learn is the goal. So being blessed in Hebrew is, is being someone who's going straight instead of crooked. Yeshua said this in the Sermon on the Mount with the Beatitudes when he said, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers. He would have been saying Eshrei, this word. So Eshrei Tamime Tamime Tamim is blameless. Tamim in Hebrew. It means to be complete or, or sound. And so you can see the bilateral root here, Tom, or even Tamim, with that Yud being infixed in Tamam, conjugating it and making it, you know, using it in a different way, using Tamam in a different way. There's the the trilateral Shoresh Tamam. It means to be complete, right? To finish. It means uh, completion. So blessed people to to God are those who are um, who are headed straight towards the finish line. That's sort of what Tom is. It's uh it's to be Tom or blameless in God's sight is, is someone who's headed towards the finish line. Their life, their life is going straight toward the goal. That's what Tom mean means in Hebrew. When Yeshua, again, he used this word when he, when he said, you know, we should be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Well, he wasn't meaning perfect... Um, in the sense of you've already arrived, but perfect, he would have used the word tamim or tam. Tamim is not that you've arrived, but that you're headed towards the, the right finish line. You're going straight, eshray, toward the goal, tam, tamim. And to do this, you, you need a derek, right? You need derek. That's the, that's the Hebrew word for... Um, for way, or a road, right? A journey, right? Every human being is on a, a life journey. No, no matter what they believe, no matter where they come from, every human being is on a path, a derrick. It's the, it's the path that, that is leading their life toward one goal or another. And so to God, the blessed... Right, the Eshrei are those who are who are on the path that leads to Tom, to completion, to the finish line. To they know that their life is not about this temporal world, but it's about a bigger picture. It's about the kingdom of heaven, right? The the 
the the kingdom of Mashiach. It's about it's about eternal things. Everything we do here in this life, and so the blessed person is always living that way. They're on this path that you know, unless you can see it with the eyes of your heart, no one even knows that this is happening. But everything they do now is is not only having to do with now, but it's also having to do with the later, Tamim. So that's the, that's the path they're on, the derrick that they're on, the rock. So you can see that right here. Jesus said, Yeshua, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's what he taught Mashiach to be. And so he, he said he is the way, Haderek. He is the way to Hashem. God, um, through Mashiach, will bring all men to himself and, so, and women to himself. So, um, so Yeshua said he is the Derek. So as believers here, we see Messiah already built into Mizmor Kufutet right in the first verse. So Esre Tamime Derek Haholachim Batarat Adonai. Haholachim is uh, those who walk. Halak is walk in Hebrew. And so you can see the shores right here, halak. And so then the hay at the beginning is a prefix. And it's sort of like, in this case, it's sort of, oftentimes it's the, but here it's, you know, who, those who walk. And then the yod, the yod and the mem at the end is a suffix, im, or yam, and it makes halak plural. Halakim, Holachim. And so Haholachim, or those who walk, Beitarat, this is Torah. This is Hashim's Torah. Here's Torat, Torah. And the Bet is a prefix meaning in, right? In the Torah of, of uh, Hashim, right? So Torah is translated oftentimes the law in the in the Brit Hadashah in the New Testament, here in the New American Standard in the Tanakh. Um, but but Torah really means direction. It means the instruction of of Hashem. It's the way He wants man to go. He it comes from this ancient. Hebrew root yara, which means to shoot an arrow, right? So the, the farmer would shoot an arrow across his field with a string attached to it, and, and it would land on the other side of the field, and it would make straight lines so that he could plow his field with straight lines to, to, to plant his crops. And so law in, in uh, Hebrew, Torah, does not mean law. That's not a good translation. It means it means the way of Hashem, the way that God wants man to go. So you can see here in verse one, and we're going to see it all through this the psalm, that Hebrew is an is an object driven language with motion built into it. Everything's about motion. Eshrei, right? Those who are going straight. That's what blessed means. Tamime. The finish line, right? That has to do with motion, a journey, right? You're, you're going somewhere. Derek, right? A road that you're walking on. There's many Dereks. And uh, so we want to be on the, the Derek of Adonai. Um, so those who walk, that Haholachim, those who walk in the Torah of, of uh, Adonai, walk, those who walk are those who live. That's who these are. That, to, to walk in this sense in Hebrew is to the way we live. To the Jews, you, you uh, practice halakha, right? You practice the, the, the law. But uh, it's really the way we're supposed to walk. And Hashem doesn't want a, 
necessarily necessarily a legal relationship with his people. It's one based on mercy. It's one based on his uh, his chesed, his uh, his rachem, and so he he uh, he blesses those who are on a life journey. That is, that they're they're living their lives for Hashem. They're living their lives according to the way of Hashem, the Torah of Hashem, the way he's he's pointed with his arrow t for us to walk in. So when we come up on different things during the day, different circumstances, different feelings, different emotions, different choices, okay, the blessed are those who are headed straight toward the goal of Adonai. They're, they're going to make decisions or walk in the ways of Adonai, the way that he said to go about money and marriage and being offended and serving and, and all the different things that he would have us to do. This is the Torah of Adonai. It's, the, it's his instruction, the way he wants us to go. It's not a law. It's not a law that he, he, he if we break, he kicks us out of his house. No, it's just the way he wants us to go. And so I pray that you're about this, that you are a person of, of Tom, that you are a person who is, who is headed straight toward the goal with everything you do in your life uh, of, of walking in the ways of Hashem. And so we find out His ways by reading Torah, by reading Scripture, and by uh, seeking the truth. So I, I, I hope that's encouraging to you today. I hope that you're, um, that you're Esrei, that you're blessed. And I pray that uh, you will um, be blessed in learning to pray. Psalm 119, verse 1. And next time we'll continue on. But for today, Esrei, Tami me derek, ha cholachim betarat Adonai.